I talked to you for a few moments for the thought, and when I saw him, and when I saw him. Put your Bibles down, put your hands to the Lord, and let's ask God for fresh anointing. Dear Lord, we love you right now. We ask your God for fresh anointing. Fall upon this congregation and upon me, God. Help us to minister together the needs that are represented here today. Dear Lord, I pray that you would meet each and every one of those in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Let's not forget to pray for our Bishop of Kilgore. Let's hold him up in prayer. God will continue to bless him and uh, strengthen him. And God will put strength in his feet and heal those bones properly. He will be able to start getting around because that's that's the reason why he's a little discouraged. He wants to be out preaching. He wants to be moving around. And let's pray for our bishop that God would uh, give him a special blessing. I was in the valley and I preached uh, awakening on uh, Saturday, uh, Friday night. And what a great move of the Lord we had down here in the valley. That service was a powerful flow of the came in among those people it was such a great blessing to be down there. So I want us to talk this morning about when and when I saw him. And when I saw him. I want us to focus in on Jesus today. I want him to become or to be at the center of our attention. I don't want you to concentrate this, this morning on your wants. I don't want you to spotlight your needs today. I don't want you to direct your attention to your problems today. Don't fix your eyes on the many unfinished tasks that await your attention. I have to do that. I've got a garage half full of boxes like that. Just moved in. And Dear God, we don't get these boxes unpacked. As told Sister Ray, just, we're stacking them over there, we're going to forget about it. <laughs> Someday, some way, they'll get unpacked. I'm not worried about it right now. Amen. I don't want you to look at your past. I don't want you to stare at your present situation. And I don't want you to lift your eyes and even look into the future today. I just want you to put your eyes on Him. Like Paul admonished the Hebrews, I want you to look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Don't look at your husband. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your friends. Don't look at your boss. Don't look at your leaders. Don't even look at your pastor. But please, by all means, do look unto Jesus. Put your eyes on Him. As Moses of old, of whom Paul states, by faith forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, for he endured as seeing Him who is invisible. Moses endured all that he went through and was able to give up all of the treasures and the pleasures of Egypt because through eyes of faith he had fixed his gaze upon the God of the universe. He was able to lead the Israelites out of Egypt because he saw with eyes of faith that God was working, leading, and moving in bringing them out of bondage. He was able to endure everything he went through in his life because he saw or understood that the invisible God was visibly manifesting himself in all areas of his life. So I want you to look at Jesus today. I want you to see him today. For if you can see him, if you can catch a glimpse of his glory and a peak and his power and catch sight of his grace you will never ever be the same again 
If you could just see him today, you would join with all of the saints with beating heart and bated breath as they sing, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord. I would that we could crown him with many crowns today. A crown of love, a crown of worship, a crown of faith, and a crown of obedience, a crown of a godly, holy lifestyle, a crown of humility, a crown of glory, honor, and praise for which he alone is worthy. The songwriter said, Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. I'm so glad we can feel his presence Hallelujah. in this house today. I don't know about you, but I want to crown him King of Kings. Would you lift your hands with me right now for just a moment before we go on in this message? And would you place the crown upon the brow of the master right now? Would you crown him with love? Would you crown him with praise? Would you crown him with worship? Would you take your eyes off of this whole world for just a few moments and focus in on him? And would you look unto Jesus right now? Would you look unto him and would you praise his holy name? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want somebody right now to lift your voice a little bit. Come on. God is in this house. He has touched my spirit right now. If he can touch my spirit, he can touch yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. He had no church. He had no preacher. He had no 
saints. He had no beautiful music and praise singers who sing under the anointing. He had no company. He had no encouragement to praise God or to pray. But he pushed all of those negatives to one side. And the Bible says he got in the spirit of the Lord's day. I'm asking God somehow to touch, touch us today. To speak to us today. And allow us to push through all of the negatives in our lives. And get a focused vision of him today. When John saw him, he was overpowered by him. And he fell at his feet as dead. John had a powerful reaction to seeing the Lord. He does not just swoon or become overcome with awe at the sight of the Lord. He emphatically states, I fell at his feet as dead. Yeah. Notice that he was not dead. He was as dead. In the Bible, you have people that fell at the feet of the Master. Wise men fell down and worshipped him. When the lady that had the issue of blood, she found out that she was healed. The Bible says she was fearful and trembling, and she fell down at the feet of the Master, and she told him all the truth. Jairus saw him, the Bible says, he fell at his feet and invited him into his house. Peter saw him after his resurrection and saw the miracle power that the Lord had. His eyes were open and the Bible says he fell at, on his knees at, 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 at the feet of Jesus, overwhelmed by his presence. And he said, Lord, I am an evil man. I am a wicked man. He said, Forgive me until he repented. When those ten lepers left and one came back, the Bible says that one that came back who had a thankful heart, he fell at the feet of Jesus and he gave him thanks. I want to tell you something. If you really get your eyes on Jesus and you really see him in his beauty, in his glory, in his grace, in his power, Something's going to happen in your life. Yes. You might be just like Jairus. You might fall at his feet and you might, you might invite him into your house. You might be like the one leper that came back. You might fall at his feet and you might give him thanks. You might be like Simon Peter who doubted. And when he saw the miracle power of the Lord, you might fall at his feet like Simon Peter did and repent.
for it. And the only way He can bless me is if I fall. He can bless me if I'm standing. He can bless me if I'm kneeling. He can bless me if I'm laying down. I can be on my face. He can bless me. I can be laying on my back. God doesn't care the posture of your body. Just as John will fall dead next 
as dead men at his feet. I do not ask the Lord today, Lord, overwhelm me. Lord, conquer me. Lord, subdue me. Lord, dominate me. Lord, rule in me. Lord, control me. Lord, be supreme in me. Lord, engulf me with your glory. Overcome me with your presence. Let me lie at your feet, powerless to resist, weakened, humble in the presence of the Lord. you take somebody's hand right beside you right now. Hallelujah. Because you see, the one that John saw is in this house right now. Jesus is here with us. For two or three are gathered in his name. He has promised to be present in the midst of of them. If you've never repented of your sins, you've never been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's only because you've never seen Him. If you will look unto Him today, you will place your eyes upon Him and get your eyes off of yourself and get your eyes off of your problems. And get your eyes off of this old world and you lift your eyes up and you will look at him. You will repent. You will gladly be baptized in his name. You will begin to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I wish I could sing, I would sing that old song right now. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Somebody here today needs to see him. Needs to see him. And while I'm lying at his feet, yielded and still, lying at his feet as dead, without any resistance to what he wants to do in me. And as I lie there and say, God, I'm not going to fight you anymore. I'm not going to resist you anymore. Because I've seen you and all resistance to what you want to do in my life has faded out of my body and my spirit and I lie before you as dead. That's what needs to happen to us here today. We need to be, we need to see him and if we really see him we will fall at his feet as dead. And all resistance will leave us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have thy no way, Lord.